Hey y'all, Data Guy here. So one of the most common use cases for Airflow is to orchestrate everything around a Databricks workflow. Um, so people love using Databricks for its really cheap compute. It can do really cheap transformations, pretty easy way to interact with uh, Spark. And so what I wanted to do today is show you exactly how to do that. I realized I hadn't made a video on how to use Databricks with Airflow. Um, and so I figured why not address that today? And so what we'll be doing today is building a kind of a production light version of a typical Databricks workflow. And so what this is going to consist of is us just loading some tables from the local data store and all the code and data for this is going to be a link in the description. So if you want to follow along, go hit that link and you can follow along with all the code there. Um, basically, what we're going to be doing is ingesting just some uh, basic CSV tables, um, selecting some countries from those tables, uh, saving those files from S to an S3 bucket, um, and then we're going to launch a Databricks workflow that's going to uh, just, you know, we have our first task to launch, join that data, run some transformations, then delete the intake files, then go back out of Databricks, delete the intake files from S3, load our files um, into an intermediary streamlet app so we can just quickly visualize them and then create a graph for us. Um, and so the data we'll be working with here is just uh, basically data around the share of solar, hydro, and wind electricity in different countries over several years. Um, and then just making a line chart out of that aggregated data. Um, and the graph will be shown, will appear in an include directory. So you can just open that uh, local file up and, and visualize it there. Uh, so without further ado, let's start building. So now we're back in our old familiar friend, VS Code. Um, and just to kind of summarize again, you know, we're building a pipeline that's going to load some local files, run a transformation, select certain information from one country, in this case, Switzerland, because um, my amazing colleague Tamara is from Switzerland. Um, then we're going to load those results into an S3 bucket as CSV files, perform transformations on that data. So join the information about, uh, you know, solar, hydro and wind power into one CSV file um, and then create a graph from that uh, CSV file and save it as a local PNG. Um, so that's just kind of all the basics. Now let's start bringing in our packages that are going to make this all possible. So here is the list of packages, and it's kind of a doozy. Um, so we have the Airflow uh, decorator for DAGs, just to, so we can instantiate a DAG with less boilerplate code. Uh, pendulum date time, so we can get the proper uh, date time. Uh, then we're also going to be using the Astro SDK here, so that we can just uh, basically, the AQL allows you to ingest data frames uh, and then perform SQL queries on them and vice versa, as well as a whole host of other features just makes simpler where I don't need to use a specific like Snowflake connector, I just use a SQL connector and then it just runs a raw SQL query in my Snowflake connection. Um, we also have Astro files, which again, just makes it easier to load files um, in as data frames and then uh, Astro SQL table as well. Similar vein, allowing us just to interact with SQL tables Pythonically and vice versa. Um, then we're also going to be bringing in the Databricks notebook operator because we're going to be creating and running a Databricks notebook uh, locally. Uh, then we're also going to be uh, downloading Databricks workflow task groups. This is how, when that graph I showed you, you create that blue little box that just does your Databricks workflows. Um, and that'll kind of visualize the different steps of your Databricks workflow within Airflow. Um, and then we are going to use the S3 delete objects operator so we can delete everything after we're done. Um, import pandas so we can do those pandas transformations I just talked about, uh, seaborn so we can do some analysis, uh, and matplotlib so that we can actually build that graph um, at the end of the stack. And that's all the basic setup you need to do. And now we can start setting a whole lot of variables because we got to connect to a lot of things here. So because we're connecting to so many different services, we're going to need to set a lot of global variables at the top of our DAG. Um, first, just going to be country. Uh, so it's a country that we actually want to use for uh, this DAG. Uh, our Databricks login email. So you're going to put your email here. You're going to put your S3 bucket that you're using as the intermediary storage location here, as well as your AWS region. Um, then you're going to define some Databricks notebooks names. It's join data, transform data. Um, and these are actually stored in our include directory here on the left. Um, so if you download this, you can just use these notebook files yourself. You don't need to build them on your own. Um, basically, what these are doing is just those transformations I was talking about earlier. So joining and then uh, visualize or transform the data so it can be visualized. Um, and then once you set that, so you're going to set your Databricks notebook name. If you're using something different, you're going to want to change these values. Um, but if you just want to keep them the same, you can basically keep all of these, let me close this again, all these values um, the same because these are just referencing our local file paths to the Databricks notebooks that have already been pre-made for you. 
Um, then you also have the S3 folder subset you're gonna wanna use, transform data. Um, you can either use these yourself and just kind of set up your S3 bucket correspondingly or change them for your own values. Uh, this is the result file path, so where you're going to want to be storing that CSV file after it's gone through Databricks. Um, your Databricks job cluster key, so it knows which Databricks cluster to use. Uh, and then you're also, within the UI, going to want to set your Databricks connection, your AWS connection, and whatever database you're using as well. So uh, if you're, you know, whatever, where you're under the hood for transformations, um, set all those in the UI using these names, and then these would just automatically populate and be used within the DAG. Um, and then also down here, you have your country subset for that S3 folder division. Um, and we're not just yet done with setup. So the kind of annoying part about using uh, Databricks with Airflow is just there's a lot of setup that you just do. But once you're done, um, then it becomes a lot easier because you're not switching between, hey, your Airflow section, your pipeline, and your Databricks. You have it all visualized in one little uh, UI. So now that we've got our variables, we're also going to want to add our job cluster spec. Um, and so here's basically the config details you're going to need for your Databricks job cluster. So you might be change some of these for your particular use case. If you just want to execute this exact setup, you can just kind of mimic this, so create a Databricks job cluster within your Databricks environment um, with these configuration details. Um, and then here you can see we're just passing the information. So if you want to create a new cluster, you can just create one using these details. Just make sure you, know, you hook up your Databricks connection to your own Databricks environment. Um, and then we're finally done with setting all the variables. I know there's a heck of a lot. And let's start creating some tasks uh, before we actually create our DAG. And here we have our first task. So this is using that Astro SDK transform function, which again, just lets you perform transformations agnostically from the database um, that you're actually using. So this AQL transform operation is going to basically just perform the SQL query on the table that I've already defined um, and in the country I've defined. And so basically all we're gonna be doing here is just pulling, so this is going to be passed um, and we're actually going to map this to process all of our different CSVs in parallel. So selecting from each table. Uh, so for each of those different, you know, sun or solar, uh, hydro and wind, uh, we're going to select the table or the section of that table that contains information about our specific country, which in this case is the United States. Not Sweden. So it was Sweden initially, but I'm going to switch it to the United States just because, you know, you're probably from the United States if you're watching this. Um, well, that's actually not true. A lot of Brazilians um, and people in Hyderabad also love Airflow, which I love. Um, and so the other Astro SDK transformation we're going to be making is an AQL data frame transformation to create the graph. So one of the beautiful things about the Astro SDK is that you can just read Pandas data frames directly into a task um, and then perform Pandas operations on that uh, data frame. So in this situation, we're just going to read in a data frame. Um, and actually, just so you can see, we're using that SNS. So the um, Seaborn library that allows us to do some of this analysis um, uses a lot of college if you're a uh, data analyst. And so what we'll do is just set the style. We just want a grid. So this is just allowing us to visualize it using Seaborn. So Seaborn is kind of a visualization tool um, or for actually plotting these. So then what we'll do is plot using that matplotlib we're importing as PLT, um, creating, so this is where we're actually creating the graph image um, at the end of the deck. So just setting up the beginning and the end uh, using SDK transformations, and then we'll actually build the rest of the DAG within the DAG definition section. Um, so let's go get started on that. So here, pretty simple DAG declaration. You know, I don't want to get too fancy with these. Um, we're just going to call this renewable analysis tag, no schedule, no catch up, start date, whatever you want. Uh, this is kind of a manual test run, so don't worry about it too much. Um, and then once we're done with that, we're going to want to create our actual first task, which is going to be loading those files, um, those S3 files I mentioned, or those CSV files I mentioned um, from the local directory. Um, so if we, again, just open to the left here, you'll see that these files are just in our local directory here. Um, and then we can hide this back. And here we're using that AQL load file operator. So again, just a really easy way where I can just specify the input file, specify the output file. Um, so this is you know just using the Astro SDK to say, hey, this is the table, whatever connection database you're using here. Um, so you can put this snowflake, redshift, whatever. Um, and your input file is just using the local file path um, and there's nothing else. So you don't need to use like a local file system to specific database operator, completely agnostic. 
And then another thing to call out here is that we're using task mapping. Uh, so you can see we've got this dot partial and then dot expand k works. So this dot expand k works basically has the effect of for each of these uh, kind of task definitions, uh, like little JSON or JSON templates here, um, we want to uh, load all these in parallel. So this will create three different task instances that will be spun up in parallel um, to load these files all at the same time. So we're not having to load one file, then the other, then the other, um, just making the processing of this uh, data quicker and just kind of general best practices for ETL uh, workflows anyways. Uh, then once we're done with that, we are going to want to select countries using that SDK transformation we already defined. Um, so here, what we'll be doing is saying, uh, select countries saying dot partial for so just this when you're using dot partial it's saying keep this variable constant across all the different map task instances so for our country United States for each of those tables that we just loaded so this is mapping over the output of this input table in tables task so you can see that in tables dot output dot map and then it's saying for each of those input tables and output table or read in um, that input table is X and then take an output table where the name is just, it'll be, so So what, what's, what's happening here? This is gonna be like, let's say a sun, the solar table, solar dot name, so that's what this ginger template is doing, um, country. So what this will have the result of doing is creating a table in our database for each of those three files that is just the information about solar, wind, and, uh, hydro energy in the United States. Um, and that's all we need to do. And then once we are done with that, we will create our next task. We're gonna export this information from our temporary tables and bring it back into S3. So going in and out of S3 and, and that local database just so we can perform some of those like transformation operations within the database. So here we have saving the information from each of those temporary tables. So we just created those temporary tables for each uh, our method for the United States. Now we're gonna bring them back into S3. Um, so here, saving those files back to S3, if it exists, so we're replacing the ones we already created. Um, and again, we're using that expand method so we can create map tasks, so we can do this processing in parallel. And here, what we're doing is just taking those files from our uh, intermediary database. Again, that database can be literally anything. Um, and then the output file is just going back into our uh, S3 bucket. Um, and that is all you'll need to do here. Um, so bringing it, that intermediary table into S3. Um, and now we are ready to actually get started with our Databricks uh, provider task group. So here we're going to define a task group uh, with Databricks workflow task group, Databricks connection ID, job cluster, job spec. And what this is going to have the effect of doing is creating that kind of blue box, a subsection of a DAG that just contains our Databricks workflows. So we can easily identify, hey, these are what the what's happening within our Databricks workflows. Um, and just visualizing each of the steps within that, um, within kind of the context of our larger DAG, but also keeping that visualization separate. So just all you have to do here is just specify your job cluster um, and your database connection ID, which again, you're just, these will automatically be set when you create those variables at the top. Um, and then we'll, with this task group, we're going to create our Databricks uh, operations. So here we're going to want to, uh, so define it as with task group, Notebook one equals Databricks Notebook Operator, or standard Databricks Notebook Operator, uh, task ID join data. So this is where we're joining all those three data sets into one. Uh, again, just using those variables we said at the top. So Databricks Connection ID, Notebook Path. So using that local notebook that we have here, um, and then taking that to define the what's going to happen within your Databricks environment. Uh, source is going to be that S3 bucket that we just had, uh, and your job cluster key will be whatever yours is as well. Um, so the beauty of setting all these variables at the start is you don't have to do them a second time when we create a second task that is uh, for transform data where we are actually transforming that data to create um, that graph at the end, uh, which I'll show you later on. Uh, that's actually gonna show us the trends in renewable energy in our country. Um, and so once we're done with that, so that's kind of the whole Databricks section actually done. So Databricks notebook operator is pretty simple to use because you're doing most of your work um, external from this. So you're gonna still have to Know, create your relatively beefy um, Databricks notebook files. So you can see here, you know, this is where we're bringing, we're, again, within the notebook file, you're gonna have to import any package you're using here, import, you know, string IO, PySpark, um, and still define a lot of those same variables. Um, so make sure when you're actually, if you're trying to run this yourself, go in these Databricks notebooks and input your specific secrets here um, so that 
this, this workload can actually run. Um, otherwise, it, it won't be able to. Um, and you can see through here, you know, we're basically just, so this is the join notebook data. We're just loading the data from those CSVs. Um, so for every file in those CSVs, appending them to each other um, and just creating a data frame from them. So pretty simple operation there. Um, and then we are just joining them to a results table uh, and then converting the Spark data frame into pandas, removing any duplicate columns, um, and then saving them as an S3 file to a CSV file to back to S3. Um, and then for the second one, transform notebook data, um, we are again setting variables, setting our uh, listing all the files in our join directory so that we make sure we capture all them. Um, and then for every data file uh, from our CSV, read them into separate Spark data frames, um, CSV files. Then we're going to calculate the summation column for each Spark data frame. So uh, calculate what the percentage of solar, hydro, and wind is as a total percentage of electricity. Uh, then append them together and convert each Spark data frame into pandas, loading it into S3. And then we're uploading all that data back into S3. So that big transformed uh, data set that contains the electrical information for every category for our country, which is again, United States. Uh, so just want to also walk you through the Databricks side of things. So you don't just think, hey, you know, I can just pop these Databricks notebooks that's in. These actually are probably where the bulk of your work is going to be when you're dealing with Databricks workflows. Uh, the airflow part of it isn't really too complicated as you saw. Um, and so after we're done with that, just so, do some housekeeping. We're going to want to delete those intake files um, from the S3 bucket just because we don't need them anymore. And this allows you to keep running this uh, DAG. Um, and then what we're going to want to do is uh, load all the results from uh, our S3 bucket into uh, back into our relational database for storage. Um, so here, this is what's happening. We're using that AQL load file again, so that S for SDK. Um, we're just taking the input file, reading it from AWS. So this is the this is going to be your S3 path, um, and then this is the output table. So just creating a table within your database connection with the name of that CSV file. Um, and then once we're done with that, we will set our bit mapping. So set exactly what's going to happen here for between you know set the relationships between our different tasks. So first you know we have that save files S3. Then we are creating that task group that contains you know, our Databricks operations. Um, then we're taking that out and loading these files. Um, so you can see here, load file the DB, deleting the intake files, and then finally create graph um, at the end of the DAG um, for just obviously creating that visualization, which is the whole goal here. Um, finally, AQL cleanup is going to clean up temporary tables in your relational database. So this is just, you know, again, good housekeeping. Make sure that you don't have any leftover temporary tables. Just taking up space in your database. Um, and then finally, always got to make sure you instantiate it as a DAG and you're good to go. Um, so this is pretty much all you have to do. Um, so again, just to kind of call back to what we were building here, you know, we're ingesting the CSVs, we're selecting our, uh, our country's data from each CSV, saving those into an S3 bucket, then joining that data using Databricks, transforming it before taking that transform file um, and creating a graph out of it. And so what that graph will look like if you do this properly is something like this. So you have here the percent of solar, hydro, and wind within Switzerland. So this is just taking an aggregate view of how much are renewables energies used in Switzerland as a percentage of the total electricity supply in Switzerland. Uh, so cool, fun little, uh, you know, kind of workflow within Databricks. Great way to get started because it's not too complex on either side. It's all relatively common concepts, but it does get you familiar with, hey, this is how, you know, Databricks notebooks work in conjunction with Airflow. So, you know, you don't have to have three different pipelines where you have, you know, one pipeline that cuts off at once you bring in a Databricks and you have to go into Databricks to monitor it. And then another pipeline that takes that data from Databricks and, and you know, saves it, creates a graph. This way you have one unified DAG that contains all of that information for you. Um, and, that's really all I have for you today. So I hope you learned something. Glad I finally got around to making this video. Um, and happy developing, happy building. And have a good one. Data guy out.